Good morning. Today I want to talk about a, a great scientific breakthrough for us beauty people. Um, just hope it comes to fruition during our lifetimes. And the other was a TEDx um, presentation that uh, Chris shared with me this morning and brought me to tears. Um, I don't even know which one to begin with. And today's video is brought to you by JBS Farm Soaps. Um, the soap today is lime, basil, and mandarin olive base soap. Boy, I'm getting a lot of lime and I don't get a whole lot of basil. It just kind of anchors it and the mandarin, but lots of lime. So I had to go yellow green and, and use that really fun mold. But um, so there's that. I, you know, Tammy, I love um, Joe Malone's lime, basil, and mandarin. So that was, that was just my little take on it. Then I finally made a bath bomb. Oh, Carol show. You guys got to go see her. She's a crack up. And she does, she's very creative with her videos, and, and you're going to enjoy that too. But anyway, um, Luscious Lemongrass Bath Bomb. Carol, um, Carol asked me on my Etsy site, she goes, well, where are the bath bombs? And I said, oops, I better make some tomorrow. So I've only made one um, batch, but I'm going to make some more. I made them a little smaller, so these are only $4 instead of $6. I couldn't imagine spending $6 on one tub. But you can break them apart and make them last longer, or even put them in the bottom of your shower and use them like a shower steamer. Yes, I did have real coffee today. Uh, anyway, this one is Luscious Lemongrass. And actually, the uh, scent that I got is Avo Bath that Lush makes, but I don't have any avocado in it, and that's the Avo part of their bath. So this is just the lemongrass scent that they use in their bath bombs. And theirs are green and big and the 695 size. Uh, so anyway, these are fun. They smell very invigorating. They're for, you know, it's a gray old day out, and I need some perking up, and... So you put this in your tub, or you can get your kids in the tub, and oh boy, this thing just bubbles and fizzes, and you know, bzzz, and then this will slightly turn the water yellow. And this is UBC scientists may have found the key to wrinkle-free skin. UBC is University of British uh, Columbia. Happy accident puts smile on their faces. Um, scientists at the University of British Columbia searching for ways to slow down the process of deteriorating blood vessels. Um, while exploring the effects of a protein degrading enzyme called Granzyme B, because the fellow that uh, discovered it was David Granville, uh, he couldn't help but notice that my mice engineered to lack the enzyme had beautiful skin at the end of the experiment. Uh, well, while the no normal mice showed signs of age. I'm just about going to read this to you because I don't have it memorized. This is one of the mo moments that we live for science, said Granville, a researcher for Providence Healthcare. We were interested in the effects of aging on blood vessels. Uh, we had no idea that the absence of this enzyme would affect their skin. Uh, they, had a <laughs> they had a rodent tanning salon. Which will tell you guys about the um, tanning salons. Don't go to them because you're going to wrinkle your skin. And they exposed the mice engineered to lack the enzyme and normal mice um, to UV light three times a week for 20 weeks. Enough to cause res redness but not burn. At the end of the experiment, the mice still had smooth, unblemished skin. While the normal mice... Uh, uh, were deeply wrinkled. Boy, that was fast, wasn't it? We have to wait till we're old before we get deeply wrinkled and realize, oh, we shouldn't have been in the sun. About 80 to 90 percent of the visible skin aging is caused from sunlight. We found that by knocking out this gene, uh, we could markedly protect against the loss of collagen and prevent wrinkling of these mice. Granzyme B, which is in everybody, or, you know, in the mice, um, breaks down the proteins and interferes with the organization and integrity of the collagen, dismantling the scaffolding um, that the cells bind to. This causes structural weakness and leads to wrinkles. Sunlight, sunlight appears to increase the activity of this enzyme, accelerating the damaging effects. We have, general, we have generated natural and synthetic inhibitors of this enzyme and they can easily see the application for this after excessive sun exposure. Now this is where it comes in for us beauty people. Many anti-aging cosmetics apply collagen to the skin, which does nothing to halt the um, mechanisms of aging. 
this was interesting. By adding collagen without putting out the fire, you are just adding wood to the fire. He says, this offers an actual realistic solution where you can inhibit the enzyme that is the leading cause of breakdown of collagen. Uh, drugs that can block the activity of granzyme B could also have valuable medical applications. That's why they're working on it. We're developing inhibitor, inhibitors that can prevent the activity of granzyme B and prevent degradation of that so-called extracellular matrix, said Granville. A, a firm called V, uh, that's lowercase VI, capital DA, Vita Therapeutics, co-founded by Granville, is working on a lotion that they will hope prevent sores, inflammation, facial scarring caused by sunlight in people with a form of lupus. The research is funded by Canadian Institutes for Health Research and Genome BC. This article was in the Vancouver Sun uh, by Randy Shore that I just almost read word for word. Um, this would really address the wrinkles. I mean, aside from all the medical um, advantages, um, <laughs> isn't it funny how they, you know, the uh, thing for uh, glaucoma <laughs> makes our eyelashes grow? So, you know, there's also big money to be had. <laughs> this morning, Chris uh, sent me a link to a video that was uh, from TEDx. Um, it was the TEDx RVA Women. Um, and the name of it was In My Chair, A Makeup Artist Perspective on Beauty. And her name was Ava DeVirgilis. Uh, her last name is D-E-V-I-R-G-I-L-I-S. She was an actress and then um, went into makeup artistry. And her, she was very well spoken. And she was talking about how women come to her chair and, and always make excuses, no matter what, what their age or anything. And they're, oh, I'm sorry, and all my mother said, I have a round face, and, you know, I'm just not pretty, just do the best you can. You know, we've all made those excuses. I remember sitting in Jordan's chair saying, you know, oh, sorry about the complexion. And, you know, he goes, it's okay, you know, and keeps going. Um, she said the only women that really didn't complain that were the ones that kind of knew their own mortality and um, just didn't care and just, you know, <laughs> makeup's just for fun. One woman said, today's my birthday. I'm 96 years old, or however. And she said uh, this was just uh, tip for fun. Ava had a great time um, making her up and enhancing her. And, and then another young mother came in and said, you know, I've got a six-year-old and a four-year-old and I just had my sixth round of chemo after her mastectomy and she just wanted to be pampered. No excuses, they were there to enjoy life. Let's live life to the fullest. And that's why I say, you know, heck with it. Wear red lipstick if you feel like it. Who are we trying to hide from? Anyway, I have some great quotes and if you watch this video, which I'll link below, the way she says it, I mean, it brought tears to my eyes, but some of the really pithy things that I read was, um, <laughs> she was treading in the deep end of a shallow profession. I thought that was great. Um, makeup is a therapy puppet, and it brings out what people feel about themselves. Um, I do not feel I measure or hold up to this insane new measure of beauty in this world. Um, with porn, fashion, and Photoshop all mixed into one, we can never live up to that. It's, it's a fantasy. And Whose fantasy is it? Men really don't care if we wear makeup or not. My husband says, yeah, it makes you look nicer, and he does appreciate it, but, you know, it's not whether he's going to divorce me or not. Deciding if lighting my eyes brings symmetry to my face and to my mind, then I guess I'll do it. And if adding a touch of color to my lips allows me to bring joy and color to my speech, then why the heck not? If adding light reflection to my skin gives me a little boost of confidence for me to shed light on a seemingly superficial topic to a group of intellects, then I will do it. That's what makes me feel beautiful. And I know when I feel like I've done okay, well, see here, there I go. When I feel like I've done a good job with my makeup, when I go into a group of people or into town or, you know, talk to somebody that I haven't seen in a long time, I feel more confident. I'm like, oh, I have on my eyelashes. And um, I don't say that out loud, but that's what, one of the thoughts that goes through my head and it makes me feel, okay, I'm covered. <laughs> I told you once about um, 
uh, Craig Childs reading Finders Keepers. His book is incredible. I think everybody should read it. He talks about archaeology and are we doing, you know, what are we doing digging everything up? And I mean, that's fine. Do we dig something up in the Southwest Indians and then send it to a, you know, and there it sits over in Ireland or something in a museum? Anyway. Um, his uh, next book that I'm reading that he wrote is The Animal Dialogues, and it is meant to be read just by a chapter and then go on with your life and leave it on your breakfast table and read it later in the afternoon or, or one story before you go to sleep, but of course I can't do that. It's the same fellow. He does all kinds of hikes by himself or with buddies, and they take off in the wilderness and, and he'll hike, you know, four miles he'll follow a bird. <laughs> It's a, in, so interesting. He, he uh, talks about when he has, he doesn't carry a gun. He, he will carry a knife, you know, and his water and all that stuff. But his encounters with bears, grizzlies, cougars, ravens, hummingbirds, uh, it's just finally kind of getting us back into nature and to look in the animal's eyes and see with their perspective because we're so wrapped up in ourselves, our asphalt, our chain stores, our same diets, you know, just day-to-day -day grind, sitting in your car, um, which I can't stand, so that's why I live on a little island. But anyway, um, the animal dialogues, um, the dialogues he has with them mentally and how he wants to speak out to them, but, um, you know, of course he can't. <laughs> anyway. What's on my face? Ashes today are the Misadoros 601s, the uh, uh, lipstick I have on is the um, Naked Liner um, from Urban Decay, and I'm using just this uh, brush because I'm also wearing the Sephora, what is it, a uh, 10 hour lip ink. And the name of this color, Rouge Infusion, and the name of this color is number 10, Red Essence. And that that's a really nice color. But here it is, dark red. But the thing is that I find is it's like a lip stain. It, um, you blend it out to like nothing and um, you end up keeping the color on. Let's see, on my cheeks I first did the Illamasqua Promise because I was doing a little bit of pink and then I put on the Tarte Amused. Now let's go pink. I never wear pink, I like brown, you know me. So there's the Amused and my perfume today, my scent of the day, is um, Elizabeth Arden's Red Door. I forgot to tell you what was on my lid. I didn't bring the palette in but um, I used MAC today and um, rice paper on the corner on the corner and on the brow and uh, woodwinked on the lid and satin taupe on the outer corner so I don't know if you can see with my lashes so until next time thank you so much for joining me I really appreciate all your comments and your uh, suggestions I, I you guys are are so much fun so until next time I'll see you later bye bye so thank you JBS bar for sponsoring this video